Hi YouTube. If you've been to my channel before, you know I'm a big advocate for the Blue Scuzzy hard disk emulator project. Unfortunately, I've been pipped to the post by Colin from This Does Not Compute, who's done an excellent video showcasing some of the new features which have been added to the project, as well as upcoming features such as the Blue Scuzzy file transfer utility. A quick recap for those of you who don't know what a Blue Scuzzy is. It's a hard disk emulator that allows for the direct replacement of traditional spinning rust hard drives and replaces platters with an SD card. It's vastly easier to configure for mere mortals like myself, and it's about a third of the price if you're willing to build your own or half the price pre-built than other solutions such as the SCSI to SD. Blue SCSI uses disk images, and a new utility called Disk Jockey has been created. It allows for the easy creation of disk images rather than having to find blank ones on the internet, and can be either used on the Blue SCSI or emulation applications such as Basilisk 2, Sheepshaver, Mini VMAC, as well as for other hardware emulators like the Floppy Emu or Rascuzzi. You can choose from one of the classic configurations or specify your own capacity. It's super handy and I suggest you check it out. While some people may see the use of disk images as being a disadvantage, I see it as a positive. Not only can I use the hard disk image in Basilisk or Sheepshaver, but I can use those images on actual hardware. Don't want to get all my toys out to play? No problem. I can fire up my emulation application of choice and boom, I have the same install and configuration, just as if I were sitting in front of an actual machine. And what's great about the latest firmware is you no longer have to worry about file extensions. Previously, disk images had to have the .hda extension, which if you wanted to use in Basilisk 2 or Sheepshaver, you had to rename. It was a little clunky, but Blue Scuzzy now doesn't care and that makes transferring images over a breeze. Now if you want all the bleeding edge features of Blue Scuzzy, you're going to want to take a look at the latest beta firmware. Not only does it have all the features of the stable release, it has two super cool new features. Let's switch over to my Performer 475 for a closer look at them. I'm loading Transoft's Scuzzy Director here. I have a couple of other Scuzzy probe type applications installed on this image, but I prefer this one. Once it loads, you'll see something new listed, a CD-ROM. Blue Scuzzy now supports the emulation of optical media by placing a .iso or a .toast or I think a .img and giving it the appropriate name. When the machine boots up, the CD image will mount just as a CD-ROM would. And here's where Colin beat me to it again. I've never completed Myst, so I bought a box version of it with the idea of playing it from start to finish. However, you should know by now that I'm lazy and couldn't be bothered to rip it. So off to macintoshgarden.org to download a copy. I placed it on my SD card and booted the machine. But unfortunately, I've got some kind of retro anti-technology vibe going on at the moment and I couldn't get the ISO to mount in macOS 8.1. I headed over to the Blue Scuzzy Discord and with the help of a few devs there, advised of the issue, was provided with a beta beta fix and then tested it. Happily it worked, and this bug fix will be made available in a future firmware update. You can also boot directly from an ISO by holding down the C key when turning on your machine. I can see this being an invaluable addition to the Blue Scuzzy's feature set. The second feature is the Blue Scuzzy SD Transfer Utility. This allows you to browse a folder on your SD card and download the files to your Mac. But why might you want to do this? Well, it removes the need for a bridge machine, which is often used as a means to get data on or off an old machine. You can copy files directly to an SD card and then download them to your target machine. It's faster and cuts out many of the steps in the middle. It also removes some of the complexity or knowledge required. I've loaded up a folder with some images I've resized and downsampled for use on my performer, and within a few clicks, I have the images loaded up. It's a remarkably simple but genius idea. Of course, it's still a work in progress and there are a few issues to be resolved, but for a first release, it works really well and I've made a couple of suggestions to improve it, so watch this space. The fun doesn't stop with just downloading files from your SD card. No, 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 no. You now have the ability to upload files to your SD card, making sharing screenshots so much quicker. I can't wait to see what other features get added, as I really do like this project. I hope you found this video useful, links to some of the things I've mentioned are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.